Well, this will not come as any great surprise to anybody who's awake and paying attention. And then there is that small slice of humanity that I have been fortunate enough to know and has known me. There should be. Everyone should have. And we should not have to suffer. Unusual and unnecessary pain, mental pain. Just like when we were kids, children, small. <laughs> you could go cry on your mama's lap, cry on your daddy's knee. <laughs> Lay on your grandmother's couch and wail. <laughs> oh, poor, poor me. Grandma would bring out an iced tea or lemonade made from the lemons she picked from the tree out back. Or maybe a nice milkshake because we were low middle class, no money, uh -uh. no money, hunt to mouth, mouth to mouth, hand to hand, hand to mouth, what do they call it, <laughs> but you didn't notice that as a child, all you noticed was the kindness, But the people around you showed the love, the hugs, the kisses, the rumbling, wrestling matches in the living room with my grandfather where he'd toss me into the air, like grab me, and then he'd roll on top of me. I'm gonna take you down, boy! <sighs> you don't need any money for any of that. Just need good heart. You'd have love in your heart. That's all we need. <laughs> they write songs about it all the time. <laughs> You're probably hearing some of them right now. I am. Oh. <sighs> That's all we need. Take another look at yourself. So where are we going on this little trip of mine that I'm taking you on with me? Well, the memory's a funny thing. Plays tricks. Filters. Gives a different resolution to events that happen to you at times. Distorts. Deceives. And deflects blame. But this is not one of those. <laughs> I don't think there will be any distortion, deception, or deflection in the story I'm about to tell you. Whew. It started in 1956. Was it 56? Hell, I don't know. It might have been 66. I was a kid, but... Grandma had a red Valiant. <laughs> and you look back at that Valiant. Pretty damn sexy car, really. I mean, some hot rodder could have taken that and put some big old slicks on the back, put a big old engine in there, and 
would look pretty cool to all the other hot rodders. Well, Grandma owned that car. <laughs> Not much special about it. It was just, you know, came off the factory that way. Off the, off the production line. I mean, some man. Maybe some woman. So it's in the 50s, 60s, whatever it was. I'm guessing, you know. People put that thing together. Piece by piece. And someone put the last piece on. and Someone had to jump in it. At the end of the production line. And they... There was a key. <laughs> You know, you don't, most of us don't think too much about how all this shit gets done. <laughs> all these things get done, excuse me. But it's pretty amazing. It really is. It's pretty amazing that, uh, I mean, you think about starting up a car factory. Uh-uh. <laughs> Yeah, that's a scary thing. How smart are some people? Oh, phew. Could I bore the one of those people? Bore one of those people to death in a few minutes? Probably. <laughs> they, they're building car factories in their minds and they're sending space shuttles into space and this landing people on the moon and Mars and <laughs> but all that uh, all that brilliance takes takes some love takes some upbringing takes a lot of nurturing and care <laughs> And whether you or I or anyone else were the fortunate inheritors of the genetic code that made us people that could design Mars rovers or land men on the moon Just to be decent people, we had to start off by being raised by decent people. And I know I was. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and assign a year to the old red valiant that any hot rodder would love to have. It was sleek, it was badass, it looked cool. <sighs> Paint was all... Dull because it was old. Even at my young age, I, was, I think the car was ten years old. More than that, nobody had ever waxed it or washed it or anything like that. The red paint was dull, <laughs> but it was Grandma's car. Had a push-button transmission. <sighs> now I don't remember what all the push buttons were, but I know. You know, there was Don't Go Anywhere, which had a P on it. There was Let's Go Somewhere, which had a, well, I don't remember, had a D or a number on it. I think there were a few of those. And then there was, uh-oh, uh I think we ran over the dog. That one had an off for it for old Rover shouldn't have been sitting behind the car when we went backwards. <laughs> Grandma and I would get in that car, we'd go places. <laughs> and uh, as a child, I mean, this all started when I was very, very young. <laughs> I was raised by my grandmother <sighs> and my aunts and uncles and so on. But uh, we'd get in that car and we'd go on adventures. 
and you didn't even have to start it to go there. All you had to do was climb in. <laughs> and for a very young child, Grandma had opened my door and said, Get in there, boy. Get in there, boy. <laughs> no seatbelts back then. <laughs> and it was just, back then you probably could have duct tape a child into the seat to keep them safe, but they didn't. <laughs> they used the arm method, the right arm. Whoa! <laughs> Whenever you'd come to an intersection, you'd have to stop real quickly. But uh, we didn't even have to go anywhere. Just getting in the car was an adventure. At a young age. Oh, wow. This is neat. I like this. Oh, what are we going to do next? Grandma would come around the other side. She'd sit herself down there and you know, make sure her curlers were positioned correctly. She did a lot of curling with her hair while we were out shopping. <laughs> I, don't know. I still don't understand the whole thing about the 60s curler thing. You know, women were always putting big curlers in their hair and then to go where? Where are you going to go? Now your hair's all perfectly curled, and how the hell are you going to sleep? Keep them curls in there. Uh-uh, not going to work. Even as a little child, I knew that. But then she'd turn that key in the old Valiant, in the old red faded Valiant with its... Oh, I think it had an inline six. It didn't, you know, it didn't sound very loud. Probably a little louder than a Tesla. <laughs> I think this whole shift to electric cars is a big mistake. It's just another soul-destroying experience. They're just trying to remove all sense of being in the world. Next thing, they're going to want to eliminate grandmas. You know, first we eliminate the combustion engine. We're going to uh, go zero emissions by year X. And then we're going to eliminate everybody over the age of 40. No more grandmas. No more great grandmas. Everybody has to abide by the Google code. Or the, uh, oh yeah, yeah you got to have one of them. Computer, you gotta have a computer, right? And uh, Apple, now Apple is gonna own the entire world. It's already worth more than the next seven planets in the universe. So, well, I wouldn't say it worth, but valued at. It's what they do on Wall Street. So the next target after the combustion engine and the old red valiant will be an enemy of humankind. Next target is going to be Grandma. Oh, she's got to go. She uses up too much carbon. That's a carbon grandma if I ever saw one. We're getting rid of the carbon grandmas. <laughs> no, I don't know who these guys are. The guys that are anti-grandma, anti-valiant, anti-combustion engine. I mean, I'll, combustion engine. I'm, you know, back and forth on that. You know, prove prove that you can make the infrastructure for the electric age that you claim is gonna. Occur. Okay, fine. But when you start trying to eliminate grandma, uh -uh. Oh, you forgot. You forgot. Some of us weren't born 
on the little intellectual farms where they sent you to all the exact schools where you learned exactly what you needed to, to go out and make the right amount of money as soon as possible. <sighs> now, some of us were brought up carefully. We were held. We were nurtured. We were swaddled for years. And we have heart. And we love our grandmothers. <laughs> Big mistake, tech boys. <laughs> Big mistake. And all those devices that you create, all those mechanisms, all that software that you put in there to monitor and watch us with. <laughs> None of it sees into my heart. None of it sees into our hearts. <laughs> And the worst case scenario is, and I hate to put it this way, but this is the way it will be if these cold, calculating, money-grubbing, superficial fucks continue to exploit us and attempt to take humanity from us. <laughs> Do I need to say any more? Yeah, I don't, do I? So I went out and bought a Red Valiant, <laughs> 63. It's got the push button transmission. It turns out it has five push buttons. <laughs> it's got a P. That means park so you can get out and beat the shit out of some Google employees while they're trying to make your life less worthy. And it's got uh, one, two, three, and go. <laughs> You figure those out. And then it's got one last button. And that's the thing that I always found strange. Grandma, Grandma, why, why doesn't that last button have anything on it? Why is that, why is that button blank? Oh boy, boy, you don't want to know that. We hope, hopefully we never have to push that button. Let's just go to the thrift shop and buy you some new shorts, okay? I got fingers. I got thumbs. If time ever comes, then I need to push the last button. Hmm.